We'll address the the current um, catastrophe at hand, which is the Russia Ukraine conflict right now. Mm, um, yes. Unless you've been living under a rock, you are well aware at this point that sometimes <laughs> is the better choice. Well, yeah, possibly. possibly. Yeah. More, suffice it to say, there's no way that anybody could right now be unaware of what's going yeah. on in Ukraine right now. Russia decided to invade early Thursday morning. It has been a rough uh, 24 hours plus for the people of Ukraine. Um, yeah, I agree, Angron. But they have been fighting back tooth and nail, and they have been making the Russian soldiers eat it every single inch that they fight for. Uh, there was a figure last night before I went to bed that for every one um, Ukrainian soldier or Ukrainian uh, just fighter in general, as a lot of the civilians oh, damn it. were outfitted with weapons as well and were fighting right alongside the actual nation soldiers. But for every one of the, for every one of Ukraine's forces that were lost, it was seven Russians were killed. So they were holding out like mad last night. And there was a guy who was flying, uh, I forget the name of the plane that he was flying, but this dude, they're calling him the ghost of Kiev. This guy, he took down in one evening uh, the numbers, I've heard a couple different numbers. I think the one that people are certain of now is that he took down six Russian planes in a mm -hmm. single evening. Nice. And he became an ace in a day. Now, for for those who don't know what a, what an ace pilot is, or an ace fighter pilot, an ace fighter pilot is somebody who has gotten five or more confirmed kills in the air. An ace in a day, which is incredibly hard to yeah, pull that'd off. Be insane. Because you're having to dogfight these fights most of the time. Um that means Ghost of Kavai. What's up? Uh, what did you say about turning something down? Oh no! Um, so okay. nailing nailing five just spread out. That's already a feat. There was um, a really amazing soldier back during World War II who had twenty six confirmed kills by the end of it. And then you have uh, Buck Yeager. You have the the German, uh, the Red Baron, and he had just a ton of kills as well. But this guy, to take down five pilots, let alone six in a single evening, to become an ace in a day, that is an incredible feat. And it, we have no idea how many lives that he's potentially saved by bringing down those planes. Um, so I, I maintain people keep praying for Ukraine, keep praying for those people because they are putting up one hell of a fight and they are not going quietly into that night. Um, like I said before, the, the figure last night before I went to bed was for every one Ukrainian who died, seven Russians were killed. And they have continued sticking it to them. There was, I guess, a Russian vessel. There were, there were uh, I think it was 13 Ukrainian officers that were on a post on Snake Island when a Russian vessel out at sea um, essentially told them that they needed to surrender or suffer the consequences. And the response back from those who were guarding Snake Island was, fuck you. <laughs> and uh, the Russians opened up. Think Zel Zelensky is serious about fighting to the death? Probably. Zelensky, the main guy from Ukraine? Um, I, I honestly, I, I don't know his I don't name, know. I don't know but I do know that the Ukrainian president and his He's, VP. Yeah, didn't he say, I expect not to live in the morning or something? Well, or like, well they're I'm both on the front lines fighting right alongside soldiers themselves. Yikes. Like, they, insane. they they were like, yeah, we're, we're, baller. we're staying here to fight. Ballers. Well, and, and some of the other information Go that came out. yourself, Russian ship. When, um, when the, the news broke that Russia was invading Ukraine, well, they sent the women and children away. Good on them. And there was a request that, hey, we have knowing that people or knowing that people knew that hey we have our military but any able bodied man who can stay please stay and fight and the president came out and said if you are willing to stay and fight for us 
I'll give you whatever weapon you want to fight with. We'll outfit you, we'll outfit you with whatever you need to fight. So you got people there, just regular civvies that have taken up rifles and pistols, grenades, everything mm-hmm. in between, and are fighting back. They were making their own Molotov cocktails, um, throwing them at the Russians. They took down uh, over 10 tanks and 30 other armored vehicles. That's crazy. Yeah, and the numbers are still climbing. Ukraine is putting up an incredible fight right now, and they're being aided by Poland. Uh, Poland took in a number of the um, of the escapees, the, or the uh, the people that uh, what, what's the word the um, refugees. Refugees, yeah. yeah. Poland took in a number of <laughs> refugees, and when they got there, they were immediately taken care of, given food, uh, medical treatment if they needed it, shelter. Like, and there's talk now that Britain has actually been getting guns to. I believe it's Britain has been getting guns and weaponry to people uh, inside Ukraine. They had, I forget the name of these two weapons that they, that they sent them, or at least the picture I saw had a couple of these weapons. All I know is that it, they, it was discussed what they were, and then the caption said, welcome to hell. And it was featuring these two weapons. So I don't know what they do. Um, I don't know. Maybe they fire a, an EMP magma blast that vaporizes testicles. I'm not quite sure. A gut check to see how firm he is as a leader, and not just a politician. Zelensky is the president. Okay, him, the mayor of Oven, or how do you pronounce that? A Y I V. Kiev. The Russians pronounce it as Kiev, oh, but Kiev. it's pronounced Kiev. Former world champion boxer and kickboxer, their bodyguard, and the mayor's brother, who's also a champ fighter, all took up arms. Yep. Nice. Which is hilarious because I, I retweeted or I quoted a. Uh, Occupied Democrat tweet where they were like breaking news like and pretty much stated that like You know good job. All the civilians are getting or are being given a you know assault rifles And it's just like oh, that's that's cute coming from people who, that, who that, yell you know, gun control every single time Yeah, one I was, their I was, psychos blows yeah, I was like yeah, I was just like oh now you're pro-gun. That's hilarious you know, they are whatever they need to be. I've said as it, long I, as it suits the I've mainstream it, talking point. I think I've said it in a couple tweets recently, and it, I'll say it again: these people construct. They're uh, these people don't care, and that the only thing they care about is their social image. Yep, which is to make sure that they are in the light of. Projecting their so-called correct truth or yeah. the, the, the right projecting truth. Their, their virtue, you know, mm-hmm. pre- pretending to care when they really don't like all this nonsense where you see the DNC that is trying so hard to act so woke and get on board with all this trans activism. They don't give a damn about the trans community. All they're hoping for is to secure voters Mm-hmm. Through emotions solely, and they're hoping also if the if the Georgia Guidestones have anything to say about it, they're hoping that these people will undergo hormone therapy to sterilize themselves, so it will reduce our surplus population. <laughs> that way, it saves them the hassle. Oh, mean tweets. <laughs> that way, it saves them the hassle of having to kill them themselves outright. People will literally breed themselves out of the gene pool. It's like, okay, yeah, we, we support gay uh, gay rights and we support the LGBT and let's trans everybody. Okay. Cool. You, you you want all the rights you have? Say we give you all the rights. You decide. Yeah. Well, let's all be trans. Let's all be gay. Um, after about one generation, those people are no longer in existence because they have not bred to keep their the replacement numbers up, and the ideology dies out with them. So it's like, yeah, you you want to go? Uh, you want to go chemically castrate yourself? Well, again, be my guest. Just well, be of one second. Just be of legal age. To make the decision. Go ahead. No, no, I. Yeah, I agree. Like the whole idea is like, hey, if you're of the age of understanding and stuff like that, then you do whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, you know, one is don't don't fuck around with the kids. Yep. Don't. Train and two, kids. like, I like don't demand that people get involved in your uh, in your world. Yeah. Exactly. Like the people. Like, like there, there are people, people like there, there are, people are people out there, there who will support you. So, so I, I it still baffles me on how they waste their time mm-hmm. with the people who are never going to change their mind mm-hmm. as opposed to just finding the group that they'll be comfortable yeah. with and then just continuing. Count your losses, count your blessings. The tanky left hate Ukraine because of Azov unit. 
Whistleblower from the first impeachment st stuff was on NBC talking about how this is all Trump's fault. Of course. Oh, yeah. Of, of course it is. And what's he and Tucker and blah, 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 blah. We're all going to get burned over this. You know what's really stupid, too, is you have all these people right now doing this. Well, if he was still in office, if he was still in office, this would have happened or this would have happened. Well, the fact of the matter is that's irrelevant because he's not in office and this bad thing did happen. It happened on President Biden's watch. And what's really, really retarded is everything leading up to this, including Biden's little speech the other day, where they were talking about moving troops closer to that border, American troops, and then they're pulling away American troops from our southern border to, I guess, get in position to help their NATO allies overseas. He more or less has been bent over backwards by Vladimir Putin at every single turn, even going as far as to give him 16 different sites that they could not hit for a cyber attack and saying, hey, uh, these are six areas that are, that are off limits, more or less saying, hey, these are our most important things that uh, go ahead and attack him now because I'm retarded. Um, and going, going even beyond that, Going beyond that, he decides, oh, well, we're going to go ahead and put sanctions on Russia for having invaded Ukraine. Yeah, okay. OK, you put sanctions on them. You're going to try and make it harder for them and for their elites to essentially be able to do business. OK, the Nord Stream pipeline is shut down. Trump shut that down and it, it's been supported the, 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 the shutdown of it um, by this current administration. However, our Keystone pipeline is also shut down, which now that gas is having to be transported on trains that are owned by somebody who has the government in their pocket. It's owned by, by a corporate fat cat because the, uh, the uh, what's the word, the technocracy uh, is such a real and present evil here in the US. So he places these sanctions on them. And Putin more or less is like, yeah, oh, wait, what did Biden say? I didn't watch the speech. Who gives a shit? We're invading anyway. As if the sanctions are going to stop somebody who has already proven themselves to be a tyrannical monster by starting a war with a country um, under the pretense that they were going in to stage and then act upon uh, a self-defense mission or just a defense mission. A defense, um, what's the words used? A defensive move. Putin is still claiming that this is supposed to be a defensive move. Um, Joe Biden then comes back out because obviously, oh, the sanctions didn't work. It didn't deter anybody because that's cheap talk versus actual action, which we're seeing Putin do. Um, we're seeing the Ukrainians have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So Joe Biden then comes out today and says, no one expected the sanctions to prevent anything. Then why do them? Yeah. So the question, the question, yeah, <laughs> begs the question. Um, then why in God's name would you level the sanctions if you knew all it was going to do was kick the bear and piss him off further and he was still not going to acquiesce and do what you were hoping he would do? Unless they were hoping that this would actually come to full-fledged war, which at this point I wouldn't rule that out because we've seen that the leftist mentality that is currently running most of our governmental bodies is absolutely insane. So uh, keep going, Ghost of Kiev, and take down as many of them as you possibly can. It's a can. straw man argument and deflection from dementia Joe's screw-ups and ineptitude. A toker's Twitter feed is all you need to read on the conflict. Yeah. You know what, what's really, really sad is it's clear that Joe Biden is a man suffering with terrible, terrible dementia. He has slipped so far into senility that when you watch him walking off certain areas, he's having to be led by the hand. His wife the other day had to lead him off stage and he looked like a crippled old tottering man because that's what he is. His mind is no longer there like it used to be. Now, anybody who doesn't recognize that Joe Biden is a puppet at this point is blind um, or is uh, in denial or both. Um, but this administration that's propped up behind him is pushing so much crazy 
hurtful policy that I know a majority of it he would never agree to on his own. Because for a while there, he wasn't nearly as far left in action as he is acting now. Um, and so it makes me wonder, what kind of dirt do they have on Joe? Um, I don't know how many times he was on the Lolita Express, that airplane that flew to um, Epstein's pedophile island. I don't know how many times he was on Epstein Island, but I can only imagine that they must have a photo album of him nailing minors while wearing a Batman costume. And they're just threatening, hey, we'll destroy your livelihood, we'll tarnish everybody that you know's name, we'll ruin your image to your grandchildren should you not play ball with us. Because to have him sign over 40, 40 emergency, um, emergency authorizations uh, what, what are those called? Sign uh, four, over 40 ex, um, executive documents to that more or less they override. Oh, yeah, like right in the beginning? Yeah. yeah. What, what are those called? Um, executive orders? Yeah, to sign over 40 executive orders. For them to push him to do that. And Trump signed, what, two, three at the most? They must have some serious, serious damning dirt on him. And... He's forced to play along right now. So I don't know if they jab him with an EpiPen or they load him up with cocaine before he gets out for some of his speeches where he isn't having to clench his hands just to stay rooted to reality or what. But they are putting him out there and forcing him to say everything and do everything that they want him to say and they want him to do. And it's elder abuse. Uh, Flaw, uh, Flaw Man of God says, I think he just wanted to be president so bad that he would say anything to get there. He's been trying to get there for 20 years or more he sold his soul for this oh definitely there's some demonic crap happening oh, yeah. behind it for sure definitely. like there's he, there's nothing about this like yeah he definitely like, or, gave a lot of his soul i would probably i think obviously the bible says it's going to get a lot worse mm -hmm. um it's going to get worse and then it's going to get into a false good because that's when you know the antichrist comes and mm -hmm. brings unites the world together under a false pretext where literal power like unscientific power is going to come down yep. like he will call fire from the sky and people are going to fall for it um but yeah no like it's sad because he's not there anymore like mentally, yeah, he's left he's, the building he's left the building but it's also demonic crap being pulled into it too that he's a part of so he's yeah. just a, a husk of a person yeah he is that not only, probably probably something beyond dementia. Yeah, Whoa, like I guarantee there, you, he's there's the a toric is too black pilled and nihilistic. It's basically FTW burn it all down like he did with COVID. What was it? Metork, uh, Medoker, Medoker, M E T O Q or K U R. Medoker is too black pilled and nihilistic. It's basically FTW burn it all down like he did with COVID. Hmm. Yeah, um, it's it. They're they're playing politics with people's lives out there, and we've seen the very real and damning repercussions of that over the last three years. With how many people lost their lives to COVID, and how many people now are suffering with terrible, terrible, debilitating health issues due to the vaccine. Oh, Medicare, Medicare. That's how you say pronounce Medicare. Um, yeah, it, it it's it's really really. My grammar. Good. Good. <laughs> My, I speak English. I speak English. It's the Pepsi good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, to reiterate, we know that Joe Biden is a puppet. Um, he is clearly not there anymore. And him being trotted out over and over and over like this. Um, again, they have to have some kind of dirt on him. They have to have something that is so heinous to keep him playing along because I can't imagine that he would have signed that many documents, that many executive orders and made such dramatic changes as he has been unless he was being forced to do so. Now, I'm sure he would have made a number of changes oh, that crap. would have upset the balance. I'm sure he would have made a number of decisions and probably done a couple of executive orders that would have walked back a lot of the good that Trump did during his during his administration, um, but I don't think it would be near the scale that we're seeing right now.